What's up guys and welcome back and as you can see today I came across a very very strange looking camera. This morning I had the photo market swap meet that happens twice a year here in Perth and I always go down not necessarily to to buy anything but you know just to see other film shooters say hi um, and sometimes you find something really cool like I did today. So this bizarre contraption you see here guys is a Russian Zenit Horizon panoramic film camera. So yes, panoramic 24 by 58 aspect uh, ratio, same as the X-Pan. And we all want an X-Pan these days. Everyone wants to own an X-Pan because it's an amazing field of view. It's something completely different than what we're used to. Um, and it makes for some really interesting pictures, but no one can afford an X-Pan these days. Let's be honest. They're so expensive that you either need a credit card or mortgage your house to get your hands on one. So when I saw this bizarre contraption, I, I knew what it was straight away. I knew it was a panoramic camera and I asked the guy, asked me how much? And he said, oh, hundred bucks. I said, is it working? Yeah, it works fine. He actually said, I, I'm getting rid of it because I got myself an X-Pan. Fair enough, I don't blame him. So I paid a hundred Australian dollars for this. So convert that where you will. I don't know, 50, 60 US dollars. So dirt cheap. Now the camera is very, very limited guys in terms of, of features and what it can actually do. I mean, it does shoot panoramas, which is great. Um, but essentially you've got three workable shutter speeds for during the day, three workable shutter speeds for long exposures. Um, you do have a good aperture range. We'll go over everything in a sec. Um, but I think that it's really cool because you know, when you put limitations on yourself in terms of gear, sometimes you can become more creative. Um, and especially the fact that we're shooting panoramas with a limited camera, uh, make for some very interesting results. So guys, these bad boys are not very ergonomic. Um, straight away when you pick it up, uh, you know, the shutter release button is not where you'd think it'd be. You'd think it'd be on the front of the camera when you go to take a photo, but it's actually recessed at the back there and it makes it a little bit difficult um, and a few times I went to take a shot and I went to press it and I forgot that it's back there. So it's not very ergonomic in that sense. The film rewind lever is the smallest and most uncomfortable I've ever used on a camera. It's completely terrible, um, but it gets the job done. The camera itself is pretty much completely plastic except for the lens and lens housing, which is made out of metal. Um, the viewfinder, uh, I should say it's uh, you know 28 mil lens, 28. 2.8 to f16 lens um, but the viewfinder is cool it's you know it is warped around um, because the nature of these rotating cameras as you can see is very noisy the lens swings as you can see so it swings around to give you that panoramic photo so you do get a little bit of um, not distortion but a little bit of a curvature effect on either end of the frame um, but like I said, guys, it cost me a hundred bucks and considering that it does do the same aspect ratio as an X-Pan, it does give you a little bit of a funky, unique image. I think it's kind of cool. But back to the viewfinder, like I said, it's curved and you can uh, see the entire hole. Uh, there's no frame lines, I should say, inside the viewfinder. It's just a, a wide panoramic 28 um, millimeter equivalent view through the viewfinder. But it is pretty, pretty clear to see. Now, you notice that there's no way to focus this camera. It is a fixed focus lens. And luckily, uh, the guy I bought this from had the manual. And in the manual, um, it's actually got the fixed focal distances. I'm gonna put that on the screen for you guys so you can see it. But essentially, when you're out on the street, um, what I was going with was FR, F8 and F11. Um, from F8, everything from two meters to infinity was in focus. At F11, 1.5 to infinity, and then at F16, one meter to infinity. So I was just using those three apertures and going between the three shutter speeds. Again, another limitation of this camera. Essentially, for daylight shooting, you have 60th of a second, 125th, and 250th of a second. You've got three workable shutter speeds, which really isn't ideal if you start getting into shade. Um, and I also found, because I was shooting shot two rolls of tri -X today with this, and I found that it was. Probably gonna, I'm probably going to have a few overexposed frames because um, I haven't got the film back yet um, because I was at f16 at 250th of a second and the meter was still reading 500th. Um, so probably a little bit of over, uh, a few overexposed frames, but I can deal with it. Um, I'm sure the results will be pretty cool. Um, essentially, you do have this lever here next to the film rewind. Now, that goes between your other three shutter speeds. So when it's on white, 
you've got access to 250, 125 and 60th. When you turn it to yellow, that's your long exposure mode, you've got access to an eighth, a fourth and half a second. Um, so if you're working on a tripod, it's kind of cool, you can do those long exposures. Um, but what I really found cool about this camera was the combination of a few things to kind of make it a really cool street camera. Now, on top of the camera, you guys can see you have a spirit level or a bubble level. This is obviously meant for when you're on the tripod to get the camera balanced correctly so you get an even horizon line. So with the way that the panorama swings, you know, if the horizon's off center, it's gonna look a bit funky. So it's a cool addition there, but you can see that through the viewfinder as well, which is cool. But what I was finding was, I was setting the camera to whatever settings I needed to, and then I was holding it below my chest here, pretending like it was a TLR, like I was looking down and I was walking into a group of people trying to find some people and I was actually leveling the camera using the spirit level so I had a nice even frame and then I was essentially, let me just change this back to a quick shutter speed, essentially walking around and when I found a, saw a shot like, you know, because 28 mil is wide on the street and the panoramic makes it so wide that you can capture everything, I was just aligning the spirit bubble and then shooting and just getting that whole uh, street scene with you know whatever people I saw in it, so it was really really cool. I actually really really enjoyed that today. I thought it would make for some really interesting panoramic street compositions. Um, like I said, I shot two rolls of Tri-X today on it, going through a walk around the city. Um, but I can really see myself using this camera for some landscapes as well. Um, obviously, even easier on a tripod with further distances away. Um, so this could be a really really fun camera. Now, I haven't seen the results yet. So before I show you the results when I get them back and then we'll finish this video once I've, I've seen the photos as well as you guys, I should say from what little research I've done, obviously it's a, a Russian Zenit camera, Soviet style camera. Um, from what I've read, essentially F2.8 and F2.4 are really soft and quite unusable and not very sharp. 5.6 is okay and F8 to F16 is tack sharp across the board. Um, so I did shoot a few frames at F2.8 and F4 today. Um, and I will mark those ones on the screen for you guys so you can see. Uh, but otherwise, for a hundred bucks, a panoramic camera, can't complain. Had a lot of fun today. Now let's roll those images so you guys can see them and then we'll come back in a couple days uh, once I get the film back and I can look at the images as well and we'll top out this video. See you in a sec. So you've seen the photos. It's been about a week, a week and a half. I've been sitting on them for going through them. Uh, first thing I have to say is yes, very, very happy with the results. I'm actually extremely happy with the results considering it's a hundred dollar camera and I didn't have really great expectations for it. I mean, I knew it was limiting. I knew obviously it was obviously nothing like an X-Pan um, except for the aspect ratio, of course, but functionality wise, ergonomics wise, um, but a couple of the points I want to go over is number one, what I said about uh, reading comments that the lens being unusable at 2.8, 100% true in my opinion. The photos I took at f2.8 were extremely soft, almost no detail, pretty terrible, even the f4 wasn't that much better. It's not until 5.6 and onwards that it starts to sharpen up and improve. So I, I definitely think that this camera is, uh, you know, daylight, um, you know, bright daylight, ISO 100 or 400 speed kind of camera, um, landscapes, you know, high speed film kind of shooting so you can keep that uh, ISO up so you can keep the shutter speed at the th one of the three speeds obviously, but keep that um, f-stop um, up above f8, you know, f8, f11 seemed to be the sweet spot I found. Second thing I want to talk about was 
what I touched on about ergonomics. It is, you know, it's not an ergonomic camera. I did say that, but if you guys saw a lot of the photos on the right hand side of the frame, you would have seen my fingers in frame. Now, that was because when the when the lens swings across, I was holding the camera like this, okay? And obviously what's happening is the edge of my fingers, because my hands are so big, so goddamn big that it's actually clipping the side of the frame. So I'm shooting a roll of portrait now, and what I've actually been doing is making sure that when I shoot, I actually keep my fingers, instead of gripping like that, which seems to be natural and comfortable, I'm kind of gripping like this which isn't very comfortable. So another knock, I mean, like I said, it isn't an ergonomic camera. It was never gonna be just looking at it, but definitely keep that in mind so you don't end up having to, you know, recrop your photos when you get it back from the lab. Like, you know, I didn't, because I wanted to show you, but would have had to, to get my fingers out of frame. But overall thoughts, guys, 100% yes. If you really wanna shoot panoramas, you know, native panoramas, you don't wanna stitch photos together or, you know, uh, bracket, all that, you know what I mean? That sort of thing to stitch a panorama together. If you want to actually see the panoramic viewfinder like this camera has, you want to shoot that at, uh, X-Pan ratio and have X-Pan fun, but without the X-Pan money, then yes, guys. This thing has its quirks, isn't ergonomic, you know, flaws, not very well made, but it still is a lot of fun. And like I touched on earlier about putting limitations on yourself, I still think you can create some amazing images with a camera like this. Uh, going into it knowing that, you know, obviously it's not going to have everything that the X-Pan does, obviously, but it's that same aspect ratio. And the X-Pan has become so popular now um, that people can't afford it anymore. And a camera like this, which essentially does the same thing, minus all the bells and whistles, and I mean all the bells and whistles, it's a no-brainer in my opinion, guys. If you can find one at a cheap price, pick it up, you will have a lot of fun. So thanks guys for tuning in. I'll be back very soon with the next video. Don't worry, lots of content coming. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.